Welcome everybody to another episode. We're in the double digits. I don't know what number, but we are in the double digits of Agency Life. My name is Cloda Higgins and I have a very, 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 very long, long, long time friend <laughs> in the world of agency. We have known each other at least a couple of years. Risa from Cacao Marketing. I did spell that right, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> Welcome, Risa. It is fabulous to have you on Agency Life. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for, you know, asking me to be a part of your show. I was pretty happy that you asked. So no problem. <laughs> Delighted. So you have a really interesting story. First of all, from the Caribbean to Israel and then from statistics to marketing. Give us some of your story about your agency life and your journey so far. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. So just to go back a bit, um, I studied economics and statistics in university mm -hmm. and I thought this was going to be my career path really. I loved it. So I was working back in the Caribbean. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago originally. So I was working there as a statistician with the Ministry of National Security. Wow. And then, as you know, one thing happens and I met this lovely Israeli guy who swept my heart away and said, come visit me in Israel. And I thought a two week vacation actually turned into a 12 year lifetime. Oh, wow. <laughs> I came to Israel just for a two-week visit and ended up staying because I loved it. I was shocked by the whole culture and everything. Yeah. And, and then I stayed, you know, and because I didn't have Hebrew and I didn't know Hebrew, yeah. I decided to use my English to get into marketing because right. of course all the Israeli companies are marketing towards the US and the UK. Mm -hmm. So this is how my career in marketing really began. Yeah. I've been doing it since then. Amazing. But your motivation wasn't that um, for starting the agency wasn't exactly what a normal person would have. The, the reason you started the agency was quite different. Yes, it was. It was. You know, after like eight years of marriage, I got divorced and I was like, okay, I'm in this country alone. And I had, I had a kid to, at the time to deal with. So I'm like, how do I manage? Because Israeli companies are very myopic about your time the yeah. hours for working are very long it's usually from 9 to 6 p.m wow. and then you have to work when you come home after because you're working always towards the u.s so you have to keep in their time zone often i see so i thought to myself okay i don't want a full-time job and i want the flexibility of being able to stay home with my daughter if she's sick or you know when yeah. they have these long holidays like Pesach is coming over coming up now it's a month off from school basically Wow. So, you know, not having the support of my family here, I thought, you know, having a job or agency or being mainly just being um, employed on my, by my own, right. I can therefore have the flexibility to be with my kid. But Fantastic. So did you start Cacao Marketing straight away or were, what, how did it, how did it work? How was the evolution of that? Yeah, no, I was very strategic about it. You know, I worked with a couple of agencies before to see mm. how it was like, you know, to be in an agency and to run an agency and things like that. So I worked with a couple of agencies here in Israel first, and it was good. I loved working with them. But then I thought, again, it was still me being an employee. So this was my way of like thinking, okay, am I ready to do this on my own? Yeah. And I thought at that time, after a couple of years doing it, I was like, okay, I think I can go off on my own right now. And I wanted to serve clients in a different way as well. So, And what was the gap that you found that you went, okay, this is what cacao marketing is going to solve? Yeah. So first of all, I'm a huge, huge HubSpot fan. You know, I, people tell me I should be their mascot in Israel because this is all I ever talk about. <laughs> <laughs> them, right? Drinking the Kool-Aid. Good girl. <laughs> I, I drank the Kool-Aid, honestly. So for me, I just found so many companies weren't getting the value out of HubSpot yeah. because a lot of agencies actually focus on all the platforms, you know, because they're trying to get, their focus is mostly on the niche. So they right. will say, I'm a B2B tech company. So that tech company can work with Marketo, they can work with Pardot, they can work with whoever they want, but they, this is their target audience. Yeah. So they would accept this company. But I thought this is difficult because you really need to understand the platforms deeply in mm. order to make sure you can replicate the business processes of the companies in the platform properly. So I saw a lot of companies falling off the bandwagon because they were like, oh, I hate HubSpot. And sometimes I'm looking at my LinkedIn feed and I'm seeing these VPs of marketing complaining and comparing HubSpot to others. And I'm like, no, you have the best tool. You just don't know how to use it. Got it. So, yeah. 
I thought if I specialize only in HubSpot and really, you know, make companies see the value and get their processes up, it would actually, you know, help them to be a bit more, um, a bit more productive and loving HubSpot like I do. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really big opportunity now for us who have been uh, familiar with HubSpot for a very long time. They have a very uh, strong sales team. You know, I, 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 know, I don't know the current number and I must look it up, but I know that there's over 60,000 HubSpot licenses have been sold out there. But if you look at how many agencies there are in the world, it's about 5,000 and really only about um, maybe a couple of hundred of those are, are, are up in the diamond platinum kind of status. So there is a huge opportunity out there. So what kind of, how do you engage with somebody? You can't ring them up and go, you're not getting a use out of HubSpot or do you? <laughs> well, yeah, no, yes and no. I ring them up online basically. So you know, my strategy, for instance, was to do free HubSpot workshops every yeah. month for anybody who wanted to come and learn about HubSpot. And honestly, this was my biggest um, like takeoff in the market because there were so many people signing up for these workshops. And I do it very intensely. So what happens is like every first Sunday of the month, I host the workshops in Google Campus. It's a free workshop. But it's a classroom situation because I really take them through one aspect of HubSpot deeply and give them a practicum and they can do it on their own platforms and stuff. Yeah. So I can only hold 25 people every session. And I have like 150, 100 people sign up every month, you know? Wow. So there was a huge demand in the market for people wanting to learn HubSpot because what's happening is that a lot more companies don't necessarily always want to feel endowed to an agency. They don't want to always have this hook with this agency. They want to hire in-house people, but mm. the in-house people don't know HubSpot. And, you know, like a couple of people said to me, because I would say to them, listen, HubSpot have all the resources there. That's how I learned HubSpot. I yeah. watched videos. I did all these certifications. But the reality is not everyone is like self-motivated as we are. And yeah. will go and actually sit down and do these things. And they don't really have the time as often. So what they liked is that I was able to break it down for them in like nut nuggets that will yeah. make it relevant and helpful. So this is where I get all my leads. I have these workshops and they're just pouring after that. <laughs> That's amazing. I haven't, I haven't heard of Google Campus. Tell, tell me yeah. a bit more of that. Is, is that online? I take yeah, no, Google Campus. Okay, so Google has offices here, like most of these big com companies in Israel. So Intel yeah. and Google and Dave. So what Google recently did, which was what they launched just this year, they actually bought an entire building and outfitted it clouder with everything a tech company wants to actually um, like market themselves. So you have a free green room with video equipment, the best state of the art equipment, a free podcast room with best state of the art equipment, and also a classroom for workshops and a theater to hold meetups. All for free. All for free. Stop. This is the point. You don't that have an amazing one. find. Yes, it is. So you just have to book the place. And once you're having something that's beneficial to the tech startup community, they love it and they want you. So this has been my golden mine. Wow. That is, a, that is one of the, probably the best tips I've ever heard so far. And probably even a motivation for me to consider moving back to, the, back to Dublin. <laughs> because... They have a huge campus in, in Dublin. Well, that is a great tip for anyone to just reach out to their local Google office and see what facilities they have. Google campus, fantastic exactly. tip. Exactly. So do people dial in or it's at all physical? How, how are you managing? Physical. So they all attend. So my workshops, for instance, are from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. all day yeah. Sunday. So yeah. they're physically there and I physically go through everything with them and show them all the trips, sticks, trip tricks and tips about HubSpot. Yeah. Brilliant. Which is your Monday, by the way, just in case anyone, yeah, exactly. um, anyone thinks that you're, <laughs> you're going hard to the weekends, which we all know we do, but um, yeah, which is a Monday. Yeah. And so you're, you're, you've really tapped onto something really strong there. This is almost like we, we have this motivation where we would spend our time to learn things in our own time. An entrepreneur is like that. But yes. employees, you know, they're not thinking about work in the evening. Very rarely are they doing that kind of thing. So you've really bridged a gap there where it's like, yes, all the information is free, but sometimes employees need the structure. They're not as motivated as we are to figure it out. They're not as... Um, 
I think sometimes we just tenaciously keep going and keep going until it clicks. Yes, um, exactly. You're holding their hand. And this also, this beautiful gap between not beholden to an agency for a long-term contract. I've been talking about this for years. It, it, the retainers are nice, but the retainers are earned. And yeah. today, those old relationships of you know, Jack and Billy going to the rugby and uh, going to the corporate box and we'll hire that agency because Jack knows Billy. Those days are over. Like that, that is not how the world works today. So this wonderful free workshop, talk me through then what happens. They come in, they have a great time. Yeah, it's a exactly. free workshop. So for example, I always take one aspect. So like my upcoming workshop in April, I'm just going to focus on workflows. So mm. I always take like case studies or real examples from all my experience of working in HubSpot and show them how to build different workflows in HubSpot and nice. what are the nuances about the workflows. For example, a simple thing like changing something in the middle of the workflow after you turned it on. It's a no-no, you know? Yeah. You actually clone that workflow and start from the beginning. Yeah. So these little tips and tricks I show them that will help them actually be better at HubSpot and be better in running their campaigns. So after I do something like this, usually... I also look at uh, my list and I offer the companies that attended a free HubSpot audit. So I will go through their HubSpot as well and then look at what they've done well and what they could do to improve. And nice. from that engagement, after I do that free HubSpot audit, is when they want to hire me for their services. Because when I give them all the recommendations, I tell them exactly what to do. But guess what? Nobody's <laughs> going to do it, right? So this yeah. is where they hire you, and this is where my first initial um, engagement with them would begin, because they will hire me to correct these issues, and then they will be like, oh, we need a campaign next month, oh, we need this, or this is the HubSpot expert, so whatever we need, just call her. So this is how I get my retainers eventually with companies. Wow. I'm, I'm just loving this because I, we've been friends for a long time. We, we were lucky to be introduced to another agency who's also a really dear friend of mine too. And I remember your journey. I remember you saying, I'm going to take the, uh, the plunge. I'm going to do this myself. I'm not going to have this contract with one person. I'm going to go out on my own. And I am thrilled. I love that journey. That is fantastic. Um, but it can't all be roses, Risa. Come on. We know that um, some of the things that are, we, uh, we experience in agency life, we really didn't know were going to hit us. What are some of the things that kind of came out of nowhere that you were surprised about or that you felt were a little bit of a speed bump? Yeah, I think for me, scaling and like actually bringing employees on was my hardest lesson learned because, again, I took, I took for granted being always on the employee side, not really having to manage employees. I manage teams, but not having to take care of their day-to-day -day issues. You know, they had HR or the CEO to go to and complain when yes. they didn't get enough money or they didn't get this and that. But, you know, after reading your book and I then read Traction, I realized what I was missing. Right. GWC. Mm -hmm. They must get it. They must want it. And they must have the capacity to do it. So I had the mistake in the very beginning of, building my agency when I started hiring people was I looked for people who wanted it. I looked for people who sort of get it, but I didn't look for people who had the capacity to do it. Okay. So I ran into problems now because, okay, I'm a HubSpot expert. I needed HubSpot professionals or people who really wanted to invest the time to learn in HubSpot yeah. so they can continue to do the work. So one of my strategies in the beginning, for example, because Israel is very rich in Olim Hadashim, which are people who immigrated to Israel from Anglo-Saxon countries like the US and UK and stuff. So I thought of getting those people on board first because they're the ones who are coming to Israel and they can't find jobs and they may have had experiences from before. So right. I found one of my strategies was like I began, I thought I would not just look for the English ones, but I would look for the Spanish speakers because I thought they would be the ones that would find it harder to actually find jobs in Israel. Mm. So I hired a couple of Spanish speakers who knew English pretty well and had the MBAs in marketing and, you know, did some marketing jobs before. So I thought they would be easier to get onto HubSpot because HubSpot is just a tool. If you have the marketing background, then you know how to basically learn yeah. HubSpot and use it. But it was a mistake because, again, even though you have a marketing background, you have to be willing to learn something new. And HubSpot yeah. for most people is a totally new concept, you see? Mm -hmm. So... They didn't want to invest the time in learning HubSpot. So right. they became very needy and dependent on me. And I needed people who would be the get-goers, you know, who would be wanting it so badly and have the capacity to learn this so quickly that they will just do it on their own. 
Yeah. So that, no, that's, no. that's quite interesting. And like, uh, it's not just HubSpot. Maybe they haven't learned any marketing tool, like mm, Infusion exactly. Soft or something. And that for me, and I don't know if it's a bit generic, I don't take age or I don't take background. Like I don't have a marketing degree, you know what I mean? Like, you know, but I can do a marketing campaign now. But I think that's a very big thing to remember. It's not really about the tool. It's about the ability to change. And in this world, how we've changed so much, it's huge. So exactly. if you're interviewing somebody and they're like, oh, I have X amount of experience in marketing, but they haven't gone out themselves and done a free inbound certification, a free a digitalmarketers.com certificate, a free any online search to bridge that gap into the marketing technology arena from the old marketing, huge red flag for me. I don't care what age you are. Like I, I don't want to hear, you know, over 40 or whatever of that. That's for the kids. Yeah. I think that's a huge red flag. So that, that's a really good one that you brought to mind. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I had to change my whole strategy. And even now, if I meet someone who I want to hire and still didn't do any of those things, my first condition is that you do it. So I get them, I put them on a six week trial basis and I said, okay, you have three certificates to finish within that time mm. and you have to, you know, build up, like I give them my campaign to do first. So test us and cackle media after you've done these three things and build yes. out a campaign for me. So this is the only way I would bring people in right now if when I'm scaling now and looking for those types of people. So I love that strategy. So give them a campaign. This is what HubSpot does, which is fantastic. A really good tip there as well. It's give them your own portal and get, let them to do a campaign on your portal. So they're practicing with your marketing. And if there's any errors, then you can fix that as opposed to the first trial being a client and um, having them on a six week trial. Great idea. Not, you've got to, you'll know within the first few weeks, like it doesn't take months on end to see if they've got that click and that spark exactly. where, are you, where are you finding people uh risa how how are you actually finding them where do, do you advertise or you do, do linkedin or yeah i do mostly linkedin i do sometimes post jobs on linkedin but yeah linkedin is my place because i also use linkedin to source out how people act on linkedin yeah. so if i see you're very engaging and you actually you know sharing doing stuff and being in the conversations and i know this is somebody i want on my team eventually so nice. for example, I recently hired a girl who has very deep Salesforce expertise and I need the Salesforce because a lot of clients have problems with HubSpot and Salesforce integrations. So I brought her on the team to help me manage that process. And it was amazing. Every time I saw that girl on LinkedIn, she was posting about something. She's networking hard. So, you know, she's part of even my sales team, even to get more leads because she's always meeting with different companies. She's always knowing the same people or more people that I know. And she's Israeli, so she helps me bridge that gap when I don't speak Hebrew to certain people. She can come in and speak. <laughs> she's got a lot of roles right now. Exactly. That's amazing. <laughs> but it was an amazing, amazing fit because this is what I like when I'm looking to expand my team. People who are hungry, you know, people who yeah. are getting it and really doing it. And doing above and beyond, kind of out yeah. there rolling around. That's really, really cool. So you're all remote? Uh, are, you, are these people on contracts? They're not like full-time employees? Like how, how is the structure of the business? Yes. So I have right now 12 employees and oh six, of them are, yeah, six of them are full-time. So they're salaried employees and the rest are on freelancers. But, you know, I must tell you one thing too, that I have even niched myself even more. So for example... I don't do anything outside of HubSpot, meaning I don't do like SEO, PPC. I don't try to get into those buckets. But right. what I've done is partnered with companies or agencies who actually specialize in those areas. So when I do have those types of projects in, I, I partner with them. So my team, my core team is all about HubSpot. And I do have two content writers because we have to support HubSpot with content. Yes. So I do have content writers on the team, but they don't do any long form content like an ebook or anything like that. I We'll work with a content agency with specialist writers for that. But my content team helps me maintain like emails and, you know, short blog posts or repurposing content. This is their role. But nice. this is how my team is built because I have offices in New York and Nairobi and Tel Aviv. So my team is spread in those three countries. Nice. And how do you find those people? Like, what's the criteria for those partnerships and how do you maintain them? Because th th this is something that agencies I've seen struggle with over a period of time. Yeah, for me, again, I look at their, I, I spend some time observing them as well on LinkedIn and stuff. I look for recommendations from companies who've worked with them or people who've worked with them. 
And I, more importantly, I look for recommendations from the employees who they have worked with as well. Okay. So I want to see what their turnover rate is like with employees because this is also a red flag for me when people don't stay with an agency too long. And I know, yeah, because I know agencies have a high turnover because most employees get more paid more with companies. But I still want to see that these people, when they leave, they left in good faith. And it wasn't because they didn't like the agency or something wasn't right there. Yeah. So I do look for that mesh. And I also want actually a kind of chemistry between me and the founders of that agency as well. Yeah. So I do spend some time socializing and getting them to know outside of the whole work thing. Yeah. So. That's really good. And their values, like, the, you know, what, what, what are they striving for? What are their goals? And um, what are they working on? And then do you have like a regular reporting over and back between each other on the work that they're doing? Like, do they have to manage the information up or how do you communicate over and back? Yeah, so for sure, when we work on clients together, yes, we do co- collaborate. And ha- once a week, we have the exchange of reports or reporting to Brilliant. make sure we're on the same page. But when I do work with another agency, I don't bring them in as part of Kakao Media. I bring them in as their own agency. Mm. So it means the liability is on them to keep the contract going. So I make, it sh- make sure that it's clear to the client that we are two separate entities. I'm not going to, they're not like part of me. But I work with them and I prefer them as a partner. But if anything goes wrong, feel free to fire them. It's not like you, yeah. want to, you know, it affects me because I ran into problems with that with one agency where, you know, we tried to work together and then it was like, um, it wasn't a very good fit because their value system didn't align with ours. Yeah. And, you know, they ran into problems with the clients and then it was my reputation getting damaged as well. Yeah. So I don't want that anymore. So I make sure that I, I bring them in as their own entity from now on. That's a great idea. And I think companies are open to that as long as they can see that you're, you have a communication and a process for working with that agency. They're the specialist. This is how you're going to work. And then you can get on with it. I mean, it's no, it's no big deal. You don't have to uh, pretend to be bigger than you are these days. I, I think that's really important. And that's what I like selling to my clients. I'm like, I'm not trying to be the whole world. Unlike the other agencies you're talking to who want to be the whole world, that's the recipe for crash and burn because we can't maintain everything. Digital marketing is too wide and deep today to be a specialist in everything. Yeah. Um, that, that's so true. You don't have to pretend anymore. You can be small and niche and boutique and be really, really good at what you do and um, be an expert. It's, it's much, and it, there's much more uh, sort of joy in that. Instead of exactly. spreading yourself so thin, you can be a, a real expert on small things. Um, that's so cool. Uh, any, any big revelations that you kind of experienced as you were building the agency? I know um, there's been probably many aha moments, but as you were going through, when you were building at uh, things out you said you were trying to be all things to all people you've obviously figured that out with getting the partnerships in getting the relationships in, telling people that you're different any other kind of revelations about running an agency that you uh, would love to share with our audience oh there are so many where can i begin first of all i think one of my biggest revelations and especially at this time is Oftentimes, when things get really tough, and I mean, things getting tough means my workload is like overbearing, yeah. and I don't see the end of my day, and I think to myself, what is my why? Why did I begin this again? And I had to rephrase it, because as you remember, in the beginning, I said my why was to get more time with my daughter, to have more flexibility. And guess what? That's not sufficient. That's not enough to keep me going. Because wow. now I look at employees, and I'm like, they have more time than me. So yes. I want to be an employee again so I can get my holidays and weekends back, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, so, yeah. Yeah, so now I had to rephrase my why and reframe it for what it is I want. And, you know, for me, really, again, it came back down to really wanting to see how companies succeed. Mm-hmm. And when I do a good project and I see a company is actually, you know, rolling off and doing what it needs to be doing and HubSpot is supporting their efforts, This actually makes me feel good. You know, this actually, when I hear my clients come back to me and know, like one client said, you're the first person who gets it. I spoke to so many marketing people and they just don't get it. And you just get it and you help me, you know, because sometimes they just want someone to bounce off ideas off to help flow what they need to get done. So when I get that kind of feedback, it makes me know that it's all worth it at the end of the day. So me having to reframe my why, it's really what keeps me going. 
Yeah, the, it's so important to have the why. Like, uh, like you said, you can't, uh, and I remember you saying this uh, before, is like, you can't be in this for the money, right? It, yeah. I mean, or, or like you figured out going, oh, if I just have more time, I'm going to be happy. But actually, that's not big enough either. So right now, it's like a really important thing for everyone to do. Is sit down in your business today and go, why am I actually doing this? And get it up on the wall. Get it up yeah. in front of you. Uh, you know, find something online and print it off and put it in a frame on your desk, whatever that why is, it has to be bigger than money and time. It really, really does. Like you can have a good income from this and you can set your business up in a way that will give you more time. But if your why isn't big enough, it's just, you're right. It's just not going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. Now my why is my screensaver. So every time I actually have to do work, I see it coming up every time I open a new tab. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Get it up there loud and proud or put it on your phone, wherever it is. <laughs> this is why I'm answering this email again. This is why I'm working until 2am in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's, if you take a few, if you look away from your screen, it's back in your face again. <laughs> Just change the timing of your screensaver to 30 seconds. <laughs> Get a reminder of it that's so cool so uh, uh, with with all this like there's a lot of work and there's a lot of things to do tell us some of the ways you're actually coping like, like personally some of the things that are you feel are really important to keep you um fresh in the agency yeah you know one of the things i started doing this quarter and okay from this year actually i had to first of all i realized my personal relationships were suffering yeah. So my relationship with my partner, my relationship with my kids, because I would work seven days a week and they actually have a song that they sing in my house. All mommy does is work, 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 work. So they're <laughs> Rihanna to you. Exactly. So they started doing my Rihanna for me. So then I said to myself, okay, I got the message. Yeah. So I set aside time. So like Wednesday night, I dedicate to my partner and I. So after 8 p.m., no computer, no screens. We just do something together, watch a movie or whatever. Lovely. And on Saturdays, it's my kids. I don't do any work on Saturdays because it's one day they're home anyway. Because thank God for Israel, they go to school six days a week from Sunday to Friday. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's exactly. awesome. Brilliant system. So the one day they're home, I deserve to give them that attention. So I take Saturdays off as well and I do something fun with them. But Saturdays up until they go to bed. I usually start working again Saturday evenings. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, yeah, because they get once they're in bed, they can they can do that. That's fantastic. And then one of the things that I know that you do a lot of like reading, but reading through podcasts or Audible yeah. is more your style. Tell us what's what some of the favorite books um, that you've been going through that you'd recommend for agencies. Oh my God! Well, of course yours. I oh, mean, that was. I feel like I led that in. <laughs> I know it felt like you led me into that, but I'm telling you. No, I wasn't. I didn't mean that, but thank you. I'm, I'm no, glad. really, I read your book and I was like, where was this book three years ago? It was like amazing because it's such a roadmap about all the things you don't really think about when you start an agency. Yeah. You know, you take it for granted that all we need to know is HubSpot content and let's go. Yeah. But you don't understand that you have a whole set of cycle things around you that affects everything. Yeah. So you had some good tips in that book that really helped me reevaluate where I was at, again and put things in place. So like my Q2 work and Q3 work is actually setting some of those systems up. So yeah. I am better and, you know, scalable and could get my team because I want, I, mean, I have a great team now and I really want to keep them happy and keep them with me. Yeah. So I need to be able to figure that out. So your book was one. And then from your book, I read Traction. Yeah. So that was also a very good book for me. Um, what I liked, but before this, my books that I love are always biographies and entrepreneur stories. So yeah. I listen to a lot, for example, Oprah Masterclass and her Sunday. Oh, um, yeah. Because Brilliant. what I like about these stories now is to see how everybody has a journey and everybody's yeah. story had some struggle that they had to overcome. So yeah. when, I'm feeling, when I'm feeling like stressed out and wanting to give up, I just think, hey, Tyler Perry went through seven years of nobody coming to his shows. And <laughs> money. So I'm only in my second year. So there's hope because I'm still making money now. He made nothing in seven years, you know? So yeah. helps you get perspective when you listen to these things. So I listen to a lot of biographies and even like um, I do a lot of marketing books as well. So I would listen um, and I you. I usually listen to audiobooks because I'm stuck in traffic a lot with commuting time. Yeah. So 
traffic has become my best friend because it's my quiet time when I can really listen to my books. So this is my reading time. It's a great way to switch around thinking about, oh, I've got this commute or, oh, I've got this journey. It is a great way to switch it around and go, oh, I have an opportunity now to read this book, listen to this book, you know, yeah. digest this podcast, take on this information. Um, I, one of the things I love to do is when I'm going through something is to write it down as if it was a story wow. <laughs> and then pretend that going, oh, great question, Oprah. I'm so glad you asked me about this, that particular exactly. time. And I pretend I'm in an interview with Oprah because it's all the only thing that's going to get me through. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. This is exactly my tactic. I have, a, I have a picture of myself sitting on Super Soul Sunday with her interviewing me. So whenever I am like in a difficult situation, especially when I come from difficult client meetings, when they really got me in a corner and they ask really hard questions, I picture them as Oprah. So figure <laughs> out how will I answer this question for Oprah and give them the Oprah answer. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> then you can hold your head high. It's so yes, good. <laughs> you know, I'll be thinking of all the people who are viewing me right now. So this is why I have to be eloquent <laughs> and not be a bitch and say to them, leave me alone and don't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> Get an air, a totally different, a television air about you. I love it. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. So you you know there's agencies out there. I, this is um we'll 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 wrap up shortly. But I'd love us to leave. Thank you so much for everything that you've given us on this. But out there right now, there's another and a different type of Risa who's sitting out there thinking about setting up her own agency or his agency or it could be an agency couple. They're just starting out today. What kind of final tips would you give them and, and tell them what to do uh, or, or advice that you wish you had when you started out? <laughs> yeah, seriously. First of all, don't do it for the money, please. Yes. If this is what you're trying to do it for, forget about it. Yeah. Because you will make more money as an employee today, like an Israeli market. You don't understand how much a marketing manager makes today from 30,000 yeah. pesos up. So you're not going to make that money when you first start up as an agency. Okay. Yeah. So suck it up and realize that's not what you're doing it for. Mm -hmm. Find your why find, you know, understand what it is you want to get out of this. Don't be in a rat race or crab barrel with other agencies. So oftentimes we feel like we have to compete with what's already out there. Yeah. No, find what is your purpose and, you know, put on those blinders and do what you do best and do it to the best of your ability. Don't take on the competition too much. You know, and three, of course, read a, di a happy digital agency. You, need <laughs> okay. you don't need that book before you start and you start. Don't blame us. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's so, I'm hiring you for the television advertising. <laughs> Really. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And, and another point I remember you mentioned as well is about having an exit strategy, even if you're not exiting for a few years, like what is your, having your prize on the, on the end goal as well? Like exactly. where is this going? Exactly. You have to have an exit strategy. I think this is something I also only learned like later on, like when I thought about it after, because every couple months or weeks I want to give up and I'm like, I can't because I'm stuck because you don't want to feel stuck. Because mm. sometimes when you start a company, there are many obligations in having a company. You can't just shut down your company tomorrow and say, okay, Mr. Tax Authority, I'm done. Yeah. No, you have to pay the taxes for the rest of the year because you started this company or you owe the bank stuff and things like that. So you have yeah. to map out how it is you're going to get out or at what point you want to get out. Okay. Right. But what's good about having the exit strategy is that you're forced to work until that certain point. So you can't just decide today was hard and I'm closing up shop. No, you have to actually realize that you have to push yourself onwards until you reach that point where you can exit. Got so it. have a couple of milestones to yourself, I think, and decide when is the best time for you to do, to do that. Yeah. But, but all in all, you, um, with 12 employees there from a, a conversation that I remember getting the text or the message going, I need to talk to you, I have an idea. <laughs> which only feels like a five minutes ago, but I, you know, from up to 12 employees, it sounds like you're really happy that you've made the decision despite the bumps and knocks and yeah. over and back overall. Yeah, for real. I do love it. What, and I, I must say what makes me love being an agency and makes this all possible for me is the amazing support HubSpot has. Yeah. I mean, I could not have done this without HubSpot because yeah. The, you know, I have these calls every two weeks with my channel manager and we go through things and they really help 
And then, you know, I work with the manager as well for the MEA region, Pratik. And he's always, you know, giving me ideas about how to reach new clients and stuff. Although they always think my ideas are more amazing. They're like, you're doing HubSpot workshops. None of our agencies thought I've about it. I've never heard of it. Never exactly. heard of that. No, I know so, you have. Yeah. So they were like, that's brilliant, Risa. And they're shocked at, you know, the things I've done. Yeah. But still, to have their support and to always see that they're always, you know, um, willing to give you whatever support you need to help close clients. And, you know, like one of the best things for me really was I'm very bad at closing. I can, you know, make people get to me and bring the leads. But when it's, ha- when it's time to close, I was feeling horribly. Right. And then HubSpot stepped in and said, don't worry, you just bring us the lead, we'll close. And then yeah. you just on board. I'm like, that's the best solution ever. That is so, incredible. And you have, uh, you've hit the jackpot there on another level. Pratik is absolutely sensational. He yes. looks after some of my clients as well. And it is an absolute pleasure to have him on the inside working with me and inside in HubSpot. So well done there. That is amazing. Risa, only delighted that I was able to catch up with you here and share our conversations. Will I be seeing you at Inbound? Do you think we could get you to Inbound? What, what, what do you reckon? I'm bringing my whole team to Inbound. This is my goal. I actually set a goal for my team. If they get all 15 certificates, and I see they're now adding more, so it might be 20. Oh. So whoever gets all 20 certificates gets an all-paid round trip to Inbound this year. This is Woo! <laughs> what a motivation. Well, if <laughs> it, well um, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, Risa. This is really great and great content to share with our audience. Thank you so much for being on Agency Thank Live. Thank you for having me. Have a good time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.